So today we're just going to try a little virtual lecture with me, the inception of Virtual Patterson, here to take over the classroom with my barely audible voice that's been boosted by a microphone and speakers. So let's begin talking about the selves and their environment, a little follow-up lecture to go with the YouTube activity that we did yesterday. So let's get started. First and foremost, we're talking about cells. That's right, cells are almost always found in an aqueous environment, see like Aquaman, which that is an environment of water. Additionally, the blankoplasm inside of blanks, the cytoplasm mm -hmm, inside of that's right, cells, is also an a blanket, a blank. That's right, aqueous environment, like Aquaman. So you have your water outside the cell, water inside the cell, just like the bag of water floating in water that we've talked about before. And the interior of the cell is mostly water because, because there's a lot of blank and blank ions floating inside of it we're talking about yep salt you know stuff that makes food taste good and the other stuff that makes it taste sweet sugar because of all the salt and sugar ions floating inside the cytoplasm it has a relatively blanketive charge negative charge right so we've got our solution of of water floating in a solution of water except the solution inside the cell is slightly negative from all the ions now blank will occur for molecules blank enough to blank the blank blank we're talking about that's right diffusion there it is diffusion moving all from high concentration to low concentration diffusion will occur for molecules blank enough that's right, small enough to blankerate the blank blank. We're talking about going through, we're talking about permeate the blank blank. That's right, to permeate the cell membrane. Look at that pretty picture of a cell membrane. Look at how great that looks. Molecules like salts and sugar are too... That's right, they're too big, they're too large. So instead, water will move to balance the blank embrations outside the cell and inside the cell. We're talking about need to balance the concentrations, right? That's why in that YouTube activity, all the water went from the one side to the other, trying to balance the concentrations. And this blank of water is called blank. This that's right, movement of water, we call that osmosis. Look at that pretty osmosis of little cheddar cheese brick looking molecules of water. Here they are going through a specially designed protein in the cell membrane called an aquaporin that allows for water to move through. That, boys and girls, is osmosis. Whenever the cell is in a sorry, solution that has a different Blank ration, different, that's right, concentration than the interior of the cell, and the salt and sugar can't move, so water will move in or out until both solutions are yep, the same. We have a word for that. Isotonic, iso being same solution. See how same concentration inside or outside. Now the same amount of Water, good, will move in as out. When we have that equal movement, we say that we are in a state of equilibrium. Good. See how in equilibrium there is very little to no net flow, total flow. But movement from one side to the other is equal to flow from that side back to the original side because you have an even distribution of molecules in equal concentration, so you're going to have equal movement, that is equilibrium. Blank cells are best adapted to be in an blank solution. We're talking about, yep, our cells, animal cells, are best adapted to be in an 
yes, an isotonic solution, one where the concentrations are the same, because that water will move in and out, leaving the pressure inside the cell what it would normally want to be. If animal cells are placed in a lower concentration solution, that's hypotonic solution, water will enter the cell to balance the concentration. That's right. See back here, the water will enter the cell because you got a you know, it wants to dilute that, and so that's going to even out the concentration. As a result, the cell will burst. And just like the lysosome, it's going to, that's right, lice, it'll, it'll lice, that's the word for break or burst. So see here we have our cell, it's filling up with water. And this one here, oh no, got too much water, and it popped. This may have happened to you while you were looking at the uh, the cheek cells on the microscope lab. You're looking in there and you got a good view and then you're sketch, you're sketch, you're sketch, and you look back like, oh no, my cell's gone. What happened? Who bought the microscope? But what really happened is that cell took on too much water from being in that hypotonic solution and it burst, it lysed. If animal cells are placed in an, yep, that's the only one left, hypertonic solution, so you have a higher concentration outside, then water is going to leave the cell, right, to even out that concentration, causing it to shrivel. Yep, it's going to shrivel. It's going to shrink. Both situations are blankerous for the cell. They're rather dangerous. It's not a solution that the cells want to be in. They're hypotonic, fill with water, fill with water, and like a water balloon that you done filled too far, it's going to burst, and the water gets everywhere. Hypertonic solution, also not great for cells because they get really dehydrated. So it's all, that's not good for the cell either because it's dehydrated, it's going to die. Animal cells really like isotonic solutions. You know, last question of the homework. So those are animal cells. Blank cells, on the other hand, we're talking about plant cells, on the other hand, are adapted to be in an hypotonic solution, right? Lower concentration outside. In this solution, water will blank the cell. It's going to enter the cell. Unlike animal cells, plant cells have the blank blank around their outside. Make some nice stiff, rigid structure. We're talking about the cell wall. See, there it is with its angles, giving it nice structure. So, plant cells have the cell wall around the outside. What happens is the water will fill the cell and cause its blank blank to press on the blank blank. It causes its cell membrane, yep, there it is, water sneaks through, causes that cell membrane to press on the, that's right, the cell wall outside it. So it's pressing on it. It's going to build up pressure. And the pressure created inside the cell when that water comes in is called Turgor pressure. When all the cells inside the plant are having turgor pressure, we say that they are turgid. When all the plant cells are turgid, it will stand up straight. Right? You have your plant, it's all droopy. But then you give it some water, bam, and then it's standing up straight. Happy, strong plant. Sad, dehydrated plant. Happy, strong plant. And that's because the water rushing into the cells, right? builds up that turgid pressure. It's really turgid. Think a nice, delicious, crisp piece of celery when you can just psh and snap it. Turgid pressure. Turgid pressure. And for this reason, because plants love that hypotonic and love that cell wall-induced turgid pressure, for this reason, it's very difficult to blank most plants. It's very difficult to overwater most plants. Usually, if you've overwatered the plant, what you've actually done is flooded the roots so they can't get enough oxygen and let too much fungus get in there and take their oxygen. And it's usually not a problem with the roots being too wet. It's all the substrate is allowing too much fungus to grow and that outcompetes the plant roots. In fact, many plants can be grown blanco blancically, which means using just water. Yeah, hydroponically. No dirt at all because they really like that hypotonic solution. Nice work, everybody. If you have questions, ask that guy because I'm not even really here today.